So Richard, that time of year again, the biggest five days uh, on flat racing for all the owners, trainers, jockeys, and of course the stable staff as well. You've trained seven winners uh, at the Royal Meet, and the first of those came with Toronado uh, in the 2014 Queen Anne. And you've got you know, some ni nice candidates this year, kicking off with Chindit, who ran a stormer in the lock-ins last time. He did, Brett. Yeah, we were extremely pleased with his run. I thought he'd run a big race. Quite nice to see him try and eat the other one when he was on his way past. He's not like that generally, but I think he will come on again for that run. And he's in the form of his life. I actually think he might be our best chance. First race on the first day. I think he's probably 10 pound better than he was last year. He looks much bigger and fuller and much more of a man than, than he was. And his work has been super, as you see this morning. I can't wait to run him. I think he's a massive chance. I mean, you say, Ten pounds better than last year. Why is he? What is? What does he show different now to what he did last year? He used to work okay, and that was it. Now he's working like has a bit of the wow factor. He travels great, and I think Dobsey, by his own admission, didn't expect him to pick up the way he did in the lock inch, and he picked up so well that he found himself in front a long way out. And you know, we might take our time a little more this time. As I said, he will come, have come on a lot for that. I don't think he should be 12 to 1 or 14 to 1 even. Um, I've been extremely pleased with his work going in. And if he runs like he looks like he's going to, he'll take a lot of beating. And of course, he's re-opposing modern games who, who beat him in, in the lock. And is there anything you can try and advise Dobsey to do different this time to try and just reverse that form or just be a case of jump and run and see, see what happens? We, we can ride him any way we want. Um, He's very malleable. You can get a lead, you can ride a race, or he seems to love it in front. He's won from the front at Ascot on his first run this season, and he very nearly won from the front at Newbury. We don't want to set it up for the others, so if we are going to go and make it or they'll let us do it, we'll do it at our speed and might get away with it. If not, we can sit in and, and do it that way, but he, he's an outstanding chance, I think. And as you said, he's a horse that's just got a, a great attitude. He's very simple. You know, he's not keen in his races. And I suppose those are the sort of horses that you need when you're racing in these big competitive grade ones because there really is no margin for error at all, is there? Yeah, every, you know, every, if they pull or they don't settle, it's very hard to win those races. You really have to more or less be the perfect race horse, very mature and almost think like a human and be totally economical and he does that nowadays. He used to be a little bit, could be a little bit keen, a little bit eggy or awkward last year and the year before, but he seems to be over all that now and, you know, is, is a gentleman. Looking further down the line, I know you, you took um, Beat Le Bon over to Australia. Is that something you may consider with him sort of later on in this year? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's America and Australia. Australia, the prize money can't be ignored. It's fantastic and I think he's the sort of horse you could go down there and get a lot of it. Um, you can't rely on just prize money here, unfortunately, so we might have to travel to get that. And also, I think a good horse up here is a very good horse down there. Mm. So, yeah, that is something we're looking at. OK, let's talk a bit about Lucille, who's a yep, similar then. sort of horse to, to, to Chindit, and he's very consistent, was very smart as a two-year-old. Um, perhaps he's not quite shown his best so far this term, but is the plan again the, the, the Queen Anne for him? Yes, it is. Um, Sheikh Joran is going to be there, so it'd be nice to have a runner for him. He's looked a little bit flat-footed in some of his races, especially this year. He hasn't been beaten far, but he's the first one off the bridle. We might run him in blinkers just to try and stoke him up a bit. I'm not sure he faced them at home totally, so we're going to think about that still. But I think he needs to be very handy in his races because he's more of a galloper than he is of a, you know, he was second in the St. James Palace. He's won a gym crack. He's won a July stakes. So he's, he was showing a lot more speed than he is now. I think he's just got lazy as he's got older. But he's not without a chance, but he's got it to do to beat Chindi. Obviously, he's finished behind him twice this year, but he's a very capable, extremely capable horse on his day. He's sound. I just hope it turns up very fast ground for both of them. I was going to say, it's a shame like the Queen Anne isn't running somewhere like Bath or something. That would, that, that would really suit him, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would suit Ascot very much, though. So. <laughs>
Uh, let's stick with, with the owner horses. I mean, happy romance. What, what a great servant she's been for you. Uh, what did you make of her run in the temple last time? She never stood any chance at all, right from when the gates opened. The race was all over this stand side. She's over there. Pretty much a waste of a run, which is a shame because she actually nearly got to the front. She did very well to do that from that draw. She worked super this morning. She again is a filly who's probably better than ever. She won that listed race very well. She's run a lot of good races in defeat, in top class races, and I'm hoping she'll get a bit of luck in the King stand, because she's good enough to win one. She's very quick. And I think five now looks like it's her trip. And if you look at this, the sprinting division this year, there's, there's no sort of standout sprinters. Yeah. I know a few perhaps dramatise a bit of improver, but... Definitely room for yeah. one more. Yeah. And she's tough. She's an older mare now. You know, she knows, her, she knows what it's all about. If she hits the gate and the races kind of run around her, she's as good as any of them. Mm. Does, do you feel she has any preference for any specific type of ground? Or... No, I think quick ground would be absolutely fine. That shows her at her best. She has run good races on soft ground, but I think generally fast ground is absolutely what she wants. Okay, let's look at a few of the, the older handicappers. Mum's Tipple going to turn up in the Wokingham again? Yeah, Mum's Tipple in the Wokingham. Be careful, he can run any race at any time and look like a 120 horse or he can run like a 70 horse. If he gets a good trip and the race pans out good for him, you know, he'll run his usual massive race. He, he's very capable on his day and could do anything. And it's about his turn as well, I think. I mean, he was so good as a two-year-old, and then as a three-year-old, he wasn't quite so good. And he's come, he did come back as a four-year-old. Yeah. And, and why do you think think that three-year-old season for him I just think, didn't go? I think after the two-year-old run, he was the highest-rated two-year-old in Europe. He was going to do nothing but disappoint after that, the way he was all hyped up and everything. And he did look extremely good that day, but that was a York, and he kind of broke their hearts and just was gone. He is a very good horse. He's a very fast horse, and. He's genuine. The owners have had an awful lot of fun out of him and a lot of fun days out where he's run very creditably. But often he doesn't get recognised for being, a, you know, the good horse that he is. And something like a Wokingham can reignite some of these old handicappers. You know, that's a bit harsh on him as well. He's a listed winner and a very good one at that. And it can just on their day, they can really raise their game. And if it's one of those days, he won't be far away. So do you feel that a, a sort of fast run six, yeah, which crazy. where stamina comes into play a little bit more? Yeah, that... crazy six, because yeah. however fast they go, he'll travel well. And if they start dropping by the wayside and he starts passing a couple, and then another couple, all of a sudden he starts coming on the bridle and he's, you know, he can win doing that. So you've got a couple in the Hunt Cup, um, Dawn of Liberation of 98, Takarid Bay 103. Is, is, they should probably both get off that mark. Is that, is that the plan for those two? Yeah, Takarid Bay, we cut after his last run. He's on his way back now. He's going to be in good form and we have to give him a couple of bits of work. I think that will probably be the making of him. You know, he's a very talented horse. I'm not sure. He has run very well on fast ground, but there's no doubt he's a bit better on when there's given the ground. And Dawn of Liberation, it looked like he was going to run horrible at Chester last time. All of a sudden, he flew home. He's the sort of horse, again, that in a good race, the better the race is, the better he runs. Off 98, he could, have, he could be very competitive. He's, he is very lightly raced and has run some very good races and looked very good. And... I think that gives him every chance in the Britannia. He's had a run, sorry, not the Britannia, the Hunk Cup. He's had a run, had a little warm up. That will bring him on immensely and hopefully he'll run well and give it a whirl. Is ground crucial for him? I know he's had his wind and would he sort of like it on the, the quick side? Yeah, I think that would be ideal. I think the more rain we have, obviously if they have issues, I think the more it's exaggerated by the soft ground. So fast ground, yeah, should be fine and a flat track. Before we just um, conclude our little older horses segment, um, I haven't asked you yet about Aristea, and um, we haven't seen her since she ran at York. Is the plan to go to Ascot with her? No, she's not going to Ascot. She will probably go to the Lancashire Oaks um, and then plot a course for, you know, mid, 
mid to late summer and then the back end of the season. And Surumi, just quickly. Surumi is going to run, is it the Copper Horse? I can't remember. Copper Horse Handicap? Yeah, he's going to run in, I think, there's a mile and a half and a mile and six, don't know which one yet. He's in good nick, always turns up and runs his race, he's very reliable. That was a nice win at Epsom, wasn't it? Yeah, he managed yeah. to get over and get that stand side rail and, and won well. And he's been, you know, he went up for that and he's run very good races since in defeat. So, you know, he goes there in good form. Let's take a look at the three-year-old Colts then. And there aren't actually that many of them in, in the Colt division. There are a few more in the Phillies. Um, let's look at should have been a ring. I mean, he has been a brilliant horse. Often when you get these two-year-olds, these precocious two-year-olds, they rarely train on, but he definitely has, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been in great form. Well, he's really never really run a bad race. Uh, he ran a super race last time um, behind little Big Bear at Haydock. Actually looked like he was going to go and win, and I think there was an advantage that day to being on the stand side rail. And I know for a fact Sean fancies his chances of taking on the winner again, and and that's great. Because this course in the Commonwealth Cup. In the Commonwealth Cup, yeah. Um, he's a very tough horse. A lot of horses around him, all going very quick. Hopefully, he gets his chance to travel and stalk a few. And he's got better and better all year, and he, his rating is now as high as it ever has been. And he's tough and he's got the heart of a lion. You know, if you want to back a horse and one you know will run his guts out for you, he's your man. And we've just seen him on the work on your weather gallop today. He's he's like a sort of pocket rocket, isn't he? He's, he's got like some a little back pudding. side to him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's like a little pudding. He's yeah. always been like that and always looked like a bit of a dude. You know, he won the sales race having had something like five months off and it just sticks his head down always looks a little bit burly but that's him you know he looks after himself he does as little as possible and when he goes racing he does as much as possible and the great result for middle and park oh, racing yeah. real that's enthusiastic it. bunch that race has been a great idea since its inception because it gives the the very good two-year-olds from last year that don't get a mile gives them an extremely valuable worthwhile group one two a map and before this race came along there was really the jersey which a lot of them didn't get the trip and and they were kind of the forgotten group. So it's a great idea, this race. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dark 30s are the Dark Jersey Dark 30 Britannia? is gonna be in the Britannia and in the Buckingham Palace. The Buckingham Palace is obviously for three-year-olds and up, yeah. but it's back to seven. I think seven's more his trip than a mile, um, but we haven't finalized plans yet. He's gonna be in both. But he's, again, he's been quite progressive this season, hasn't he? He has, but he was a, you know, he was a horse from, from last year that, we never really got the hang of it, and he's run very well all year so far. And Ascot comes at the right time for him. Okay, I'm um, sticking with the the Colts. Starnberg won his last two, <sighs> now up to 97. Put him up 12 pounds. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of an overreaction, isn't it? And we claim five pounds as it's well. It's going to take 12 years to come back down. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, basically says you can go run in the Britannia, you'll definitely get in, but you'll be lapped. We're going to run him. We have to. Have no no choice. You know, up twelve pounds really kind of takes the the shine off the last win. He might win. But Famous you, last words. But you've got to say twelve pounds. Mm. I mean, it kind of says you've done your winning for the year. That's it. Lights out. Enjoy yourself for the rest of the year. Go being an also run. But his improvement has not been capped yet. I get that. And he literally has, has had a steep rise all year. And, and I th disappointed a couple of times last year when he didn't win. But this year he's done his win and he's won well. He's won more or less on the bridle. I hope the handicapper's right. And let's face it, he normally is. Okay. So hopefully he'll be very competitive in the Britannia, but 12 pounds, wow. Mm. Okay. We're gonna claim five again. Oh, we need to claim 25, I reckon. But, you know, he's, he's, a massively, he's a horse that's massively on the upgrade, and that is what you need for the Britannia. It's always a very good race. And I think the handicap has obviously seen it. And I suppose, depend on how he runs, if he runs a nice race, he's going to get put up even more, so then you are going to have to start looking at... But then he becomes class. a very valuable horse, you see. Yeah. So, yeah, Hong Kong. A, <laughs> well, maybe. I'll keep him here if we can, but... Certainly, you know, he's improved a stone and a half from last year, which he needed to. 
and that improvement hasn't been capped. Uh, you know, there is no ceiling being put on that yet until he until he tastes defeat. Okay, Mamam June um, onto the fillies now. Yeah. Um, very good, of course, on her first run, finishing second, and ran an absolute steamer in, yeah. in the Yeah, she travelled very well, didn't she? Yeah, and she just. He was just switching her out to get a run. Went to go between two horses, and her head just went like that. That was inexperience. He didn't really know what to do, and then she stayed on to the line. I think it was a good Oaks this year. I see the third runs in the pre-down at the weekend. I say Aidens will probably turn up in the Rib Ribblesdale. I don't know about John Costens, but hopefully but you're going to go. Yes, yeah, she's going to go, and she's in a novice race this weekend at Sandown. We're obviously not going to go there now, but. We can always come back to one of those. But she, as you see this morning, she looks like a goddess and she's a very good filly and she'll run well. I mean, often people look at these big price horses trained by Richard Hannon in these guineas and the Oaks and the Derbys and they go, you know, no hope. And I think you've proven it on more than two or three occasions yeah. with, with like some Mojo star finishing second at the Derby. They're not, they're not just there for, to give the owners a day out. Okay, they no. might be in, in one sense, but they've, they've got the ability to put yeah. themselves well. Night of Thunder was 33 to one. Bills and Brooke was 66s. That doesn't bother me what price they are. Um, you know, both those got beat in their trials and effectively Maman June and Mojo star went into the Oaks and Derby as maidens. So they were probably entitled to be that price, but it doesn't mean that they can't show themselves off very well. You know, we're certainly not there just to get dressed up and have a day out. There's no point in that. Um, and I was proud of her the other day on only her second run. It was a massive ask and she acquitted herself extremely well. And she's got a bright future ahead of her and she could run very well in the Ribble South. You said she was in training with you as, as a juvenile. Was there any particular reason why you never ran her? Yeah, she was just very weak. And she took a long time to come to herself. And so we just left her on the back burner. All of a sudden, the start of this year, she started working. Oh, that's a nice filly. That's better than she normally works. And she's really appreciated that. And she is a filly that she will get older. Sorry, I don't know anyone getting younger. <laughs> she'll get better as, as she, she gets, gets older. older. She'll get better. You know, she'll be a lovely, lovely mare for next year, big time, whatever she does this year. And depends on what happens at Ascot this, this year. W would something like the, the Phillies and Mares on, on Champions Day be Yeah, a... I think she'd like soft ground yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm not sure she, she gets a mile and a half, you know. It, you know, the Oaks was a very hard run, mile and a half. But it's only her second run. She will, she's getting stronger. You know, mile and a quarter, we'll find out as we go, but... She's got the speed for a mile and a quarter, definitely, in what, time. What was the feedback from Kevin after that? Well, he loved it. She ran a super race, travelled very well. You know, and for affiliate having on her second run against the best over that trip, we were all delighted. OK, sticking with for those once. horses carrying the silks of, of ammo racing. Uh, Mama's girl, um, the coronation stakes for her? Yeah, she's in the coronation. A bit disappointed in the guineas. The ground was awful. That's nobody's fault. That's just how it turned up on the day. She's had a nice time since, and we'll look at the jersey as well. Um, she's got the speed for that. She's won a group three already over seven. But the coronation is probably where we'll go. On her day, she's a very good filly, which she showed at a new market. This will be the first time she's been around a bench. She'll probably love that. And also, I think it makes the trip slightly easier. A round mile, I, I don't think, is as stiff as a straight mile. Magical sunset? Massive chance in the Sandringham. She was rated 98 before she went to Epsom, which was the same as Heredia when she won the Sandringham last year. Andy Cover got hold of her and put her up four, so her task will be a little tougher. But she is just coming to herself. Her first couple of runs this year weren't great. But since then, when the weather's come along, She's really got her act together physically. And her last race was probably the, the ra best race of her life. And off the back of that, she'd have a great chance back in a handicap. And power dress? Power dress, yeah. She, she was very disappointing last time at Newmarket. So ball her back, gave her a bit of a break. She's going to run the Holyrood. She's another one. On the, her first run this year, that was a great run. Lovely big filly, loads of speed. 
into a handicap, I'm hoping she'll run very well. Okay, and I think final filly, um, the big board. The big board, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> she won the big race at Leicester last time. Bit of a surprise, she wasn't working great. But it was on a day where um, couldn't top the, the boss man of, of um, King Power. They sponsored the day. And so kind of we had to run, show up with something. And she won and beat her other one. So I'm not sure that was entirely a popular result, but it was for me. And that surprised me because she was only working okay. So I'm hoping she'll have improved on the back of that. She will go to the Holyrood as well. Okay, okay. Right, well, obviously, we always like to talk about the two-year-olds. You, you know, you're synonymous with success in, in that division. You've had a good start with the juveniles this year. A couple of, a couple of them have gone in first time. A couple of them, as they often do, have improved their first run to the second. Um, and the horse that fits into that category is La Gareda, who won nicely on her second start at Goodwood last time. Yeah. She's the filly that got loose this morning when she was supposed to work. <laughs> so she never did the piece of work, but she moved very nicely coming past us with no jockey on. Um, she won very well last time. And Goodwood obviously loved her. She qualifies for the Chesham as well. So we'll have a look at the Albany and the Chesham. Filly with a lot of ability and she's just getting going. And they're the ones you want for Ascot. She's, she's on the way up. And uh, I think all these two-year-old races this year will be hot, as they always are. Um, but she has every right to be there. It's funny, actually, because I was that good with the day she won, and, I, and she really stood she out in the paddock because she's not a, a little two-year-old filly, is she? She's no. got a lot of substance yeah. to her. Yeah, she, she, looked, she looked a million dollars that day, and she actually won very well. And, and she was involved in a tussle with the second horse from a long way out. The Camden Colts. Yeah, he's a little dark horse. Yeah. I don't know, six or five, I can't make my mind up. He's one over six. He's got the speed for five. The five furlongs races, Windsor Castle and, and the Norfolk are going to be a lot easier than the Coventry. The gentlemen that own him, mad keen to go to Ascot. I think they'd run in all three if they could. But we haven't made up my mind our minds where we're going to go yet. But he will be, he will run a massive race at a big price wherever he goes. What were your thoughts on his run after the, the woodcut? Well, he got a bang coming out of the gate and it never happened at no. Epsom. And quite often, those horses that don't run a race, they come back to Royal Ascot and win. We had a horse who was favourite for the woodcut years ago called Lucky Lionel and he came back and won the Norfolk. And he was last at Epsom. So it's, it's kind of a bit of a, a pattern. And once it's, after the first furlong at Epsom, if it's over, it, it is totally over. You don't get back in the race. And Hatim, sort of a similar sort of trajectory. Hatim as the looked Cup. like he should have won, yeah. He definitely won six. He would definitely, definitely go to the Coventry. Okay. Um, Fusterlandia, son of Memas. He ran a super race the other day, I thought. Does he get five furlongs? <coughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any four furlong races at uh. Ascot, unless it's another new one. Yeah, I think he does, but he was drawn while he kind of had to go on him. Then he got softened up by something else, won that tussle, was going to go and win. And because he'd, he'd done so much at, you know, three quarters of a furlong out, he just got nailed late on. And he would probably go to the Windsor Castle and run a big race. And usually a two-year-old gelding, um, Bahia, what, what's, the, what's the likely target for him? <clears throat> so Bahia, I'm disappointed he got beat at Newbury, but... They kind of let the winner go up the rail and... 150 to one shot. I know, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Our fella, we think a lot of. And he's got a very high cruising speed. He's going to go for the Norfolk. Shake Joanne is there on that day. So we're going to go to five furlongs. You know, Ascot five is pretty similar to six furlongs everywhere else. I think the way he works, he's, he could be a very good horse, but... I've got to say, I thought he'd win first time, but sometimes ours do that. He's was it just the way the race panned out, the horse sort of got in front? The well, he and didn't just... even beat the third and fourth. He, they weren't firmly put in their place either, like I thought he would do, but it was a funny day. He had a lot of rain in about 20 minutes. I thought the ground was still quick. They obviously said it didn't ride like that, but. That might have stopped him a little bit. He's a gelding because he was such a hooligan. When he came in here, he was really bad. And, you know, he still messes about a lot now, but 
I think he's a, he could be a very good two-year-old, but winning a, a Norfolk is is a different level. I'd like to see him run well, but it wouldn't surprise anything could happen with him because some of the work he's done has has almost not been normal. All right. Okay. Uh, Packard, a horse that has yeah. sort of you know run well first so time, followed up. He definitely after. won six furlongs. He he won well at Lingfield. I know they think a lot of the second, and they're a fair you know long way clear of the third. He he's a gentleman to deal with. He's got a lovely temperament. He's got no flaws. I hope he's good enough for a Coventry. And he definitely needs six furlongs, so I think that's where he'll probably go. His owner's mad keen to go there with these horses that that can, and I think he's every right to go. I mean, the Coventry's a race that you hit I the cross, second. Yeah, you've hit the crossbar <laughs> on one of the last two Virgin years. Force, yeah. Threat, yeah. Major Caddo, Maymas. So it's a race you've got unfinished business in. That's the, yeah. that's the shot, so you've got to... Throw enough darts at the board, and you might might get one hit the. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, um, just continue just a quick look at the other two years because I know a lot of people are interested in whether they are or they aren't going to go to Ascot. Um, so you can you can let us know. And we saw Sun who who won at Newbury last week, a, a son of two darn hot. Is he going to go there? So Sun is belongs to Julie Wood. She's always mad keen to go to Royal Ascot if she can. And she doesn't want to go this year. She wants to send him to the. Superlative, seven furlong group two at Newmarket. That's an extremely good decision. Him and Rosalian, they run on the same day within half an hour of each other. I think are both very good horses. Sun won't go to Royal Ascot. Rosalian might have an entry, but I think he could be a guineas horse for next year. So I would be very happy if he didn't go to Ascot. If he did go to Ascot, he'd, he'd still be good enough to take a lot of beating in the Coventry. I think he's very good, but I'm tempted to swerve it and just wait and treat him like a very good horse. Both of them, Sun and Rosalian. Yeah. Okay. And Serene Seraph, a nice performance. Very good filly. I think Donald that Kelkaster. was one of the best two-year-old races of the year so far. The winner obviously was well fancied, nice filly. Our filly is a very good filly. We'll just go gently, gently with her. If I told you a list of horses of ours, you know, Sky Lantern, Snow Lantern, Toronado, Tormor, um, Havana Gold, Knight of Thunder, Bills and Brook, loads of Group 1 winners. None of them went to Royal Ascot at two. A lot of them went as three, but none of those went as two. So, you know, it shows you, you do have to have a very sharp, top class two year old but quite often a lot of very very good horses don't go there at two and that's why I'm in two minds you know it can catch them out early it can floor them very rarely does it make them so I'm tempted with a few just to just to swerve it when is it when you start to assemble your Royal Ascot team would it be literally as early as sort of March and April no. seeing which two year olds are showing you no, no, because they Brett, they change so much, so quickly. You really don't have a hand on it till three, four weeks before. Eight weeks before, you hope they're all Royal Ascot horses and anything that can win you think Royal Ascot. But at the moment, the last four weeks, they're probably making five or six Royal Ascot probables a week. Good two-year-olds coming out everywhere. And that's the only time where you get gauged and assessed is when you can see these other ones coming out and especially where the Coventry is concerned. That is, that is a race that turns up a champion every single year, you know, without missing. And when you have one of those like Camford Cliffs, you know it. Uh, you know, it is plainly obvious. You can't see yourself getting beaten. If you're going there with thinking you've got a little chance, you've got no chance, you know, and if you really fancy one, you'll probably finish fifth. It's like they say, if you've got a, if you're gonna win the guineas, if you've got four guineas horses, you're not gonna win the guineas. You've got one, good chance, because they should stand out miles. Yeah. You know, so you don't, you don't really know. I'd love to say, yeah, we know in March, you, you don't. You know, three, four weeks before maximum, I'd say. 
I mean, you're sitting there nice and relaxed, you know, nice bottle of water, sitting in the shade, beautiful, beautiful day today. But does, do these sort of five day meetings, these big summer festivals, do they get you a little bit? Do you yeah. sort of get quite nervous and, or do you Not just take it all in stride? Because you soon realise that it doesn't make the horses run any faster. And let's face it, how many runners a day at Royal Ascot? 140? Only six of them go home happy, people. And that's hard. And no one wants to sit around with a misery on what is supposed to be a lovely day's racing of the best horses and the best things of English society. You've got to get over it and look forward, you know, go to the next one. And if you have a runner at Royal Ascot, you're very lucky. You know, mind a winner. If you have one that runs well, you're very lucky. It's a pleasure to be there, a pleasure to take part. So of the 30 or so that you're going to have over the five days, I mean, obviously, you, nothing, nothing's a certainty, but which one are you most keen on? If you could have them free. Chinned it, yeah. First day, first Great, race. Yeah. If he wins, the rest of them can be out with the washing. If he would keep coming out, well done, Richard. You're having a great meeting. Thank you. And of the two-year-olds? Um, Camden Colt worked very well. Hartem I like. Ammo horses in a lot of nice two-year-olds there. I like the filly Gaydon. She is a great chance. She's a, she's a good filly. She's still a maiden. Third in the Merrygate last time. Then the Merrygate, exactly right. And I think we'll use her a bit more this time because she just gallops. Lovely big filly, done very well. She's sweet. I think we'll end up running in the Albany, I think. But she'll be in both. She'll run a massive race in, in either one.